Okay, so uh, my demo is for an application customizer, and this has been born out of a fairly long-winded process of migrating actually from classic uh, SharePoint publishing environment over to modern uh, for a fairly large organization. Uh, this is this has been ongoing for a very, very long time for reasons I won't get into. And um, this sample is actually currently in the SP DevFX extensions. It's actually been there for 10 months uh, since it was first uploaded and moved through the um, the process. So this has already been in the samples for quite a long time uh, for various reasons of, uh, I think, me being too busy and waiting for the stars to align. Uh, it's only just being demoed, uh, but the code's all up there and, and ready to take a poke. So um, basically, when they moved over from classic to modern, and admittedly, this is also before Microsoft Search got uh, went GA, but one of the things that kind of looked out was the modern search experience uh, being at tenant level, being fairly broad um, and fairly narrow in terms of customizations available. They were very much missing the ability to have your own customized search center. Um, we've, of course, used the absolutely fantastic modern search uh, PMP components. So we do have um, a site collection set up that we can execute searches from and some very, very basic. Uh, um, this is just a test environment, so there's nothing particular in there, but uh, that web part works great. And the question is, how do you get people there? And one of the key uh, recommendations tends to be put links in the global nav, uh, build a web part. Uh, they never really worked for me. So instead I've gone the route of an application customizer. And the other query that tends to come around is how do you configure it? Uh, being an app customizer, it could be deployed to any site collection. It's difficult from a code perspective to say, right, we're going to store the settings in a particular place in a way that's accessible. And of course, coming from a classic project, we realize that those settings are already there. So if you go to search settings under site collection administrator, you know, you've technically got the same things at the web level, but everything's a site collection these days. Um, we already have a whole bunch of properties we can use to configure how search works and where they go. So in this case, I'm simply going to change this value here to point at my custom site collection. And we should find if the demo works, because, you know, let's face it, they never do. Um, if I refresh that, I now have a search box popping on the top. And this is what I've built. So this is the app customizer that runs off of those custom properties. So unlike a Microsoft search box, which is tenant wide and global, this you can configure on any site collection and it will point directly to whatever you have configured in site settings. So here I can hit that up, hit go, and it takes me through to my custom site collection. And that can be any page. It could be configured in any way. It doesn't have to be modern. It doesn't even have to be a SharePoint page, to be honest. It's um, it's all it's doing is taking the URL that you've provided and applying the query string in the format that it's used to. Um, and of course, you can use the PMP web parts that are already there. You can wire them up and do everything that way. But this seems to work quite well. Um, the nice thing about deploying it in that way, um, if I refresh that, is that, again, if you go back and remove those settings, uh, it disappears. So it's quite inobtrusive. You could happily deploy this across your tenant, and it'll only appear in those sites where you have specified a custom search center. And in particular, um, in the case of uh, my client that I'm working with, uh, by removing these values, and uh, they've already got custom search centers quite heavily in Classic. So up until a point where they are ready to migrate over, they can continue using the existing settings they've already got in their old site collections. They will continue to work side by side, change the values and remove them. All of those properties go away. Um, now, the way that this is possible and the easiest way that this works is that all of those properties are actually stored in the web property bag. Uh, this is an absolutely beautifully formatted uh, web properties uh, that's come back for the standard APIs, REST API, underscore API, web slash all properties. So these are all the properties about the current website, or the current web. And um, if I throw that into code, we will see the slightly nicer formatted version. If I, sorry, grab that. You'll find if you look at one before you've set it. Sorry, any Martin, can you slightly increase the font? Uh, I, I know. Absolutely do that. Excellent. Excellent. There we go. Um, now, this is, this is the same site, but before I made any changes in the search settings, so there's one thing to be careful of. If you go looking for these in an existing site where you haven't actually specified a search center, there won't be any values there. These are the values now that I've applied it. And we should find, is it? No, it isn't, because I didn't hit refresh today. Hey, demo fail already. This is excellent. It's been a while. That's all I'll say. 
there we go. So now we've got these um, wonderfully formatted properties in there uh, that allow us to define effectively where the search is. And you can see here, the result page address is the one where I'd specified a custom search property. Um, unfortunately, if you if you were watching the demo and paying attention, that shouldn't be there because I removed it. And this is a bit of a gotcha you'll find if you're working with any of these particular settings, that if you reset the value to blank, the interface will not show the value, um, but when you then refresh it and come back in, the value is still there. So even though that is a blank value, the web properties are still storing that. What it's actually said is, ah, I've said to inherit settings, um, therefore that is the value that we're seeing here, inherit equals true. But the actual result page address value is still there. So you do need to do a double check in the code to make sure that you're looking for the appropriate result page address of this property. and if you if they've reset it to look instead for something like inherit true or another value because you can't rely on this property to define whether they've defined it or not so a very brief look at the code this is fairly basic it's not react it's plain javascript um, it's a fairly old sample so some of the methods and practices may have changed since this was initially come through um if I, is that big enough if i increase that a little bit is that okay can it, is that readable is that fine I'll leave it like that until someone shouts. Yep. Um, okay. So okay. When we initially come in, um, there's a simple uh, method to get the search redirect page. If that has a value and it's not a blank string, then we'll register our placeholder and then we'll uh, register a whole bunch of on-click events. Oh, Martin, Martin, sorry. Can you increase slightly? Just register when people are typing and, and uh, that's because of that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How's that? Just easier. Excellent. Excellent. Outstanding. I think the problem of a 4K monitor. <laughs> That's what I'm going to blame it on. Um, so getting the research redirect page, this is effectively where we're retrieving those web properties. So SPFX makes this super, super simple. Um, we can simply refer to the SPHTB client, get the current web URL, pass in all properties, and that will then return us in our response all of the web properties we've got. And we simply loop through those, create a simple interface to expose the ones that we're interested in. And we can then pull through these wonderfully named properties from the web property bag. Uh, bearing in mind, there'll be two of these if you've defined it at the site collection and the site level or the web level. One of them will end in site, one of them will end in web. I'm, in this example, only looking for those site properties at the site collection level. Um, you can see here, we're basically saying, right, get the inherit value. If that's equal to true, then set it blank because we'd want to ignore it. Otherwise, pull through that result page address property. Um, and then resolve that. Um, and literally as simple as um, if if that is a value, then we go through and register the placeholder and spit that out. I'm not gonna spend much time looking at the placeholder itself. It's a fairly basic HTML, uh, and this is pretty boilerplate stuff at this point in terms of all the samples and demos that are out there. Um, in a nutshell, you basically look for your placeholder. If it doesn't exist, you register it, and then you set the inner HTML to a whole bunch of values. Uh, we are, of course, using custom styles. So in terms of registering IDs and class names, we're using a uh, SAS file with an automatically generated code behind so that that all hooks through because this is TypeScript and that's how SPFX and TypeScript works, which is wonderful. Uh, that means that all of our IDs and classes are going to be unique when it gets compiled and deployed. The other thing we're using in the SAS file is a reference to obviously uh, fabric so we want to make sure that this follows all of the various theming that applies so that if they change the theme of the site or implement their own custom theme we pull all those through and that means that things like the button colors are all using things like ms color theme primary uh, the button clear button the search boxes and all the different colors are based on that theme so we don't have to worry about reskinning it or redesigning it as we deploy it um, and that's pretty much it. Um, there are, I will warn you now, there are a couple of bugs in this code that I have fixed for a client deployment that I need to go back and apply to this. Um, one of them in particular is that check for the inherit value. Uh, so if you do use this sample today, I will try and get this updated by the end of the week. Um, but at the moment, if you set a search property and then remove it, it'll disappear completely. Um, the other thing is this is currently using the styling of the old search box that used to be search this site in the header uh, because this was actually built and deployed before Microsoft Search uh, went general availability. Um, and that's pretty much it. Excellent. Thank you, Martin. Uh, so a few comments, like I said, the, the, the Microsoft Search. Uh, so can we go to the UI where you can see the Microsoft Search? And for those, because there were some comments and I'll just use you as my uh, quick assistance here. Yeah, so, absolutely. 
Um, like like Martin said, uh, we we had some communicational issues. I actually forgot to follow up on on the scheduling the demo. So Martin, thank you for volunteering still doing this a few months <laughs> after the session is still uh, oh, in in. So that's definitely on me. Now there was a question related on the on the Microsoft Search. Uh, is that now going to be taking over then the whole search experience? And the answer is yes. So whatever you're seeing in this demo, where the Microsoft Search is in the suit navigation, that is the end call, uh, and we're gradually heading there now. If you, however, like in the Martin's case, um, um, you can actually override the search result page uh, using these settings, and we do have videos on that one available as well um, by using the search heading functionality, which is in here. Um, that is a interesting bug related on the, <laughs> the page URL overlapping. Um, but yeah, so the search, Microsoft Search, uh, the top suit navigation top bar uh, is by design, and that's where we are heading uh, across the world uh, from an experience perspective. So it doesn't matter, are you in SharePoint or are you in Teams or are you in Planner or are you in Office Client? You'll always find the Microsoft Search from the exact same location. That's why we do that. So all good. So just, sorry, just actually me asking a question now, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, so my understanding is that there are this was announced, I believe, at Ignite, but there are uh, customizations coming Correct. for Microsoft Search in terms of being yep. able to de define the verticals, refiners, uh, potentially custom display and, and those kinds of features. Yep. The assumption is that is going to be at a tenant level only because uh, of the nature of the fact yes. that it's yes. from Teams. Correct. Correct. Right. So, Correct. so to be clear, the, the reason that this was built effectively, because I, I understand for smaller organizations, absolutely, there might be the case that you don't really need a custom search center in the future because Microsoft Search can take care of all that and it can do all of those customizations. Um, in this particular example, it, it fills one of two gaps. One is if you have an extremely focused microsite. For example, um, my client has a site collection that revolves all around good practice articles and they have loads of custom metadata, a specific focused search experience for good practices only. Um, and that's not really relevant at the tenant level. So they don't want to apply that at the at the global kind of search experience. Um, yeah. The other example is for larger, more distributed organizations, um, whereby in this case, it's a very, very big global organization who um, have, for obvious reasons, one Office 365 tenant and one SharePoint um, environment. Um, but the business unit that we're dealing with is very, very large. It's thousands of users. Um, so they have their own intranet within the organization. So it's effectively being able to provide a complete internet experience, including their own dedicated search center, because they've got 5,000 pages and 15,000 documents themselves without disrupting the top core global enterprise level search that they're going to get through Microsoft Search. Really good, really good. Um, so, also, uh, Frank, uh, there's a quick comment from Frank Corner just following up on, on on things, uh, the search settings are already valid for the top search bar. Uh, yes or no? Answer is yes. So uh, you can actually the search settings. If you set the search settings to be using a custom results based, um, the Microsoft Search will redirect you in SharePoint there. But it's not tenant wide setting. It's a site collection wide setting. So it's a slightly different perspective. Yes. Uh, in this case, they didn't want to lose the ability to use Microsoft Search because otherwise, yep. no one would be using it. Yep. Cool. I think that's it for now. So uh, thank you, Martin, really great stuff uh, and, and a great uh, example as well. Mm -hmm.